Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel, Mambalut's Math Tutorial. Today, we will be discussing all about permutations. But let us review first what is an FCP or what we call the Fundamental Counting Principle. So it states that when there are m ways to do one thing and n ways to do another, then there are m times n ways of doing both. So, for example, if a student is asked to roll a die and flip a coin, how many possible outcomes will there be? So, in rolling a die, we have six ways and in flipping a coin, we have two ways. So, therefore, we have six times two, which is equal to 12 outcomes. And these 12 outcomes are, we have one head, two head, three head, until six head. And then one on tail, then two tail, three tail, and so on until six tail. So these are the job outcomes which are possible in combining, in tossing a die, and flipping a coin. Another example. Suppose from these five kids, we wish to arrange three of them in a row. In how many ways can they be arranged? So say we label these kids as kid A, B, C, D, and E. And we are choosing kid B, kid C, and kid E. So this is one of the sample arrangement in choosing three of them. Or we can have another arrangements which are choosing kid C, D, and E, and the kids A, C, and B. Now, if we use the fundamental counting principle, we can have the three choices which are five for choosing the first kid, and then four choices for choosing the second kid times three choices for choosing the third kid. So all in all, we have 60 ways in choosing three of them out of five. Now let us define what is a permutation. Permutation is any arrangement of objects where order is important. You have to take note that order matters. So, so what are the sample permutations of the problem before which involves five kids? So, one permutation would be choosing the kids C, D, and E. So, take note that the first choice is kid C, the second is kid D, and the third is kid E. Another kind of permutation is choosing kids D, C, E. Observe that even though they are the same kids, but their arrangement is different or their order is different because the first kid chosen is kid D. Then the second is kid C. Unlike the first permutation in which kid C is chosen first. So whenever two objects are not in the same place, then they are a different permutation. Now, in permutation, if there are n distinct objects which will be arranged r at a time, it will be denoted by p of n r, or we can have the subscripts of n and r, or p sub n r, or we have p subscript of r and a superscript of n. But in our lecture or in our book, we will be using the first denotation which is p parenthesis of n and the formula for taking r at a time would be p of n r is equal to n factorial divided by r factorial where r must be less than or equal to n and greater than or equal to zero so r must not be a negative number now, if we go back to our example 2, dealing with the 5 kids and choosing just 3 of them, so we can have n is equal to 5 and r is equal to 3, since we are only choosing 3 of them. So, from that, we will use now the formula of the permutation, which is n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. So, substituting n and r, we have p of 5 and 3, which is equal to 5 factorial divided by 5 minus 3 factorial. 
So, subtracting first the denominator, we can have now 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial. And then expanding the numerator, we have now 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 factorial so that we can cancel out 2 factorial in the denominator. So what's left now is 5 times 4 times 3 which is also equal to 60. So again, this is the same number that we had solved if we use the FCT. Another example. There are 8 cars competing for the top four standings in order to move up to the finals in a racing. Find the number of possible rankings. So from this example, we have N is equal to 8 and R is equal to 4. Since out of them, we had only to pick 4 for the top standings. So from there, we use the formula of the permutation. So substitute N and R, we have P of 8 taken 4. So, we have 8 factorial divided by 8 minus 4 factorial. So, subtracting the denominator, we've got 8 factorial divided by 4 factorial. Then, we expand the numerator. We have 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 until 4 factorial only so that we can cancel out again the 4 factorial in the denominator. So, multiplying what's left in the numerator, we have... 1,680. So, there are 1,680 ways in choosing top 4 in a racing. Another example. In how many ways can 7 people arrange themselves for a picture taking? So, in this case, our N is 7 and our R is also 7 since all of them will be arranging themselves in a picture taking. So, using now the formula for the permutations, we have P of 7 taking 7. So, that would be 7 factorial divided by 7 minus 7 factorial. And we have 7 factorial divided by 0 factorial. Now, in a factorial notation, 0 factorial is defined as equal to 1. So, that becomes now 7 factorial divided by 1. And 7 factorial is equal to multiplying 7 times 6 times 5 until 1, which is equivalently equal to 5,040. So there are 5,040 ways that they can arrange themselves in a picture taking. Now, observe that the permutation of n distinct objects taken R at a time can be solved using the formula of n factorial over n minus r factorial. So that is if r is less than to n. And the permutation of n distinct objects taken all at a time, that means they are all be arranged. So it would be equal to n factorial. So another example. In how many ways can Marie arrange her six potted plants in a row? So in this case, n is equal to 6 and all of them is taken to arrange. So therefore, we can use the second formula which is just equal to n factorial. So we can have p of 6 taken 6 which is equal to 6 factorial and if we wish to expand that one, that would be equal to 720. So there are 720 ways that these six potted plants be arranged in a row. Now we have what we call the circular permutation. So these are permutations which are arranged in a circular form. And we can just solve this one by using the formula of n minus 1 factorial. For example, we have in how many ways can six people be seated in a circular dining table? So in this example, n is equal to six. But since they are arranged in a circular form, so we will use the circular permutations formula, which is n minus one factorial. So substitute n, we have six minus one factorial. Then we subtract first six and one, so that becomes 5 factorial and 5 factorial is equal to 120. So there are 120 ways that these 6 people be seated in a circular dining table. 
Another kind of permutation is what we call the distinguishable permutation. This permutation exists if we have alike objects. So, the number of distinguishable permutations P of N objects, where P objects are alike, Q objects are alike, R objects are alike, and so on, can be computed as N factorial divided by P factorial, Q factorial, R factorial, and so on. So, let's have an example. Find the number of permutations of the letters of the word statistics. So, if you observe, there are letters which are alike. So, for example, the first letter is S and the last letter is also S. So, if we exchange the first and the last letter, then there is no changes of the word at all. So, this requires a distinguishable permutation. So, from here, our N is equal to 10 since we have 10 letters from the word statistics. And since... S are 3 all in all, so P is equal to 3, which represents 3S. Then we have Q, which is equal to 3, which represents 3 T letters. And R is equal to 2 because we have 2 letter I's. So using that given, we can use now the formula of the distinguishable permutation. So we substitute the values of N, T, Q, and R. So we have... 10 factorial divided by 3 factorial times 3 factorial times 2 factorial. So expanding now 10 factorial until 3 factorial so that we can cancel out 1 factorial in the denominator. And the other 3 factorial and the 2 factorial in the denominator are also expanded. And observe that in the denominator which is are colored in blue, so we have 3 times 2 times 1 is equal to 6. That means we can cancel out 6 also in the numerator. And then the green one, which is 2 times 1, can be cancelled out from 4. And what's left in 4 is only 2. So therefore, multiplying all what's left in the numerator, we have now 50,400. So there are 50,400 ways that we can rearrange the letter from the word statistics which are distinguishable. Let's have another example. How many ways can you arrange 12 pieces of canned goods in a row if there are three identical cans of meatloaf, two identical cans of sardines, three identical cans of corned beef, and four identical cans of tomato sauce. So in this case, N is equal to 12 since we have 12 cans all in all. Then P is equal to 3 which represents identical cans of meatloaf. Q is 2 which are the identical cans of sardines. R is 3 which are the identical cans of corned beef. And 4, which are the identical kinds of tomato sauce. So using these numbers and using our formula for distinguishable permutation, we have now 12 factorial divided by 3 factorial times 2 factorial times 3 factorial times 4 factorial. So evaluating further, we have to expand 12 factorial until 4 factorial so that we can cancel out 1 factorial in the denominator. And then, 3 times 2 times 1, which is colored in green in the denominator, is equal to 6. So, 6 in the numerator can also be cancelled out. And then, what's left in the denominator, which are 3 times 2 times 1 times 2 times 1, is equal to 12. So, we can also cancel out 12 in the numerator. So, multiplying now, what's left in the numerator, we have 277,200. So, there are 277,200 ways in which you can rearrange the 12 canned goods which are distinguishable. I hope you learned something from our discussion today. Now, it's your turn to answer your learning activity sheets, but please... Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for listening at your service, Mambalot.